I'm Tony. And I'm Jeff. We're in gaming, and that's you. Hello gamers and welcome back to the inn. I'm Rob, of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in game name. And today we will be going from rank 5 to 4 with the Fatigue Warrior. Uh, this is a deck that I find pretty fun at the moment and we're doing really well with it. So we might as well just keep the streak going. Uh, just keep in mind these games will probably be a little bit longer as Fatigue games normally do take a bit of time to play. Uh, but you guys might learn something along the way that you might have not have learned before because the games take longer, which means there's more or analyzing of the plays and all that good stuff. So. Um, yeah. So we're playing against probably a secret talent, which is not so good. We can keep the war axe, probably even the slam for the shielded mini bot, so we can take the divine shield off and draw one. Seems pretty decent. Also, if he's playing cancer, we can slam cards down and, keep, and uh, not draw. Because if he is playing cancer, having the least amount of cards in our hand is really, really good. Everybody's rank five. Look at this, like a rank five party. Rank four, starfighter. Everybody's doing pretty good. Pretty good. So it looks like he's playing super paladin. I think we can go off the bat with not having to really do anything here. And this matchup, drawing into executes, uh, shield slams, brawls, really, really important. Put this apple on your head. Uh, so we can actually deal with what he brings out. Um, we're going to assume that this is a noble sacrifice. We'll play the war axe, swing into it, but it is a noble sacrifice. Uh, because why wouldn't it be? And uh, yeah, we're going to take quite a bit of damage. So we're going to take one from him, two from that, three more next turn. So we took six damage from one knife juggler and a one secret. Now he's gonna play like a shielded mini bot and an avenge, which is probably the best curve out. Ooh, another knife juggler, that's pretty good. Well, it's just a knife juggler, okay. We can deal with this. We can actually swing it into there. We can bash this one. And next turn, we can coin out the belcher, which is pretty good. Or we can slam in passive or slam and do something else, depending on what he draws here. But keeping our hand to the minimum will be the best, so his divine favor doesn't get as much value as he wants it to. For duty. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. Normally I'd just use passive uh, this turn because he has nothing good. But because he's playing divine favor, we want to pretty much keep our cards in our hand to maybe two or three, four max. And that's going to be a little bit difficult, but we'll do our best. Okay, so the Lotha basically prevents us from doing anything next turn. Wow. So we're going to kill off the 1-1, one, one, because this is going to die to that anyway. Um, that was a pretty good Lothop he just cast. It stopped us from slamming, it stopped us from shield slamming. It basically stopped us, period. There's the Challenger, which is not so good, but it's not too terrible, because we're going to be able to attack with what this guy brings out, and then go from there. Alright, so we'll attack, we'll see where the, the Avenge lands. Hopefully the Avenge can land on the 6-6, um, six, six, so we can actually shield slam it down. Um, if it lands on any other card, hopefully it lands on the 6-6. Six, six. Yes, okay. And it's gonna bring back the 2 -nine. So if we, let's see what we can do right now. So I think that's fine. So we can go ahead and shield block, see what we draw. Belcher, pretty good. Go ahead and shield slam that card down. We can go ahead, we know this is a noble sack. Unless he has a noble sack in his hand. Um, but we want to kind of conserve our mana, keep our hand low, so we'll slam this. So normally I might have War Axe. Okay, so we could actually could have attacked that with our uh, War Axe, which would have been better, but then we would have taken oh, uh, five more damage, uh, which wouldn't have been good. But this turn we can go ahead and Belcher and War Axe, so as long as it doesn't have a boom. Jeez, man. Some pretty good draws he's getting. So we basically have to Baron and hopefully his boom boss don't kill Baron. Alright, Boombots did well. Boombots did well. So if he kills off our Baron with like a weapon, we can execute down the uh, Dr. Boom. Consecrate. Okay. And a Shredder. Okay, so it looks like Belcher passive execute is a good turn this turn because it contests the Shredder. It also uses a decent amount of cards in our hand. It's actually War Axe right now, too. I think War Axe is actually pretty good. It puts us in the ability to use our revenge all around. He gets a 3-2 out of that. That's pretty good. I guess if he kings it, it's better that he kings to 3-2 and not the actual Shredder itself. Well, that's what he decides to do. I'll never tell. Now revenge will be a lot better because when he attacks into this, we'll attack with our weapon. We're going to assume that is an Avenge and it will land on this. 
both have three, which means if the, this is an Avenge, which I really think it is, we could actually brawl right now, too. What would that bring out? If we brawl and Avenge, that'd be fine. No, because if we brawl and then an Avenge lands on one of these guys that has six HP, that's not good. No, I don't have five. Let's see what this is. I guess it's not it. Fudge. Land on the two three. Oh gosh. That's that's pretty powerful you got. That's that's a good card you got there. Oh wow, that was really bad of us. Why did we do that? I guess we can brawl and hope for the best. <laughs> we can't kill that thing unless we revenge and attack him with our weapon, but that just seems bad, so we're gonna brawl and hope for the best, boys. Fuck, dude! What the hell? What kind of fucking cancer is this? Come on! Come on! Don't have two more damage. You do not deserve to win this game. Who am I? Oh, jeez. Why? The misplays. The misplays. Alright, what can we draw? What can we draw? We've literally contested everything he's played so far. That's like the one card that we cannot allow with. Alright, so we attack into this. No, we have to armor up first. No, double avenge does it. Alright. Avenge. Avenge. Shield mid. <laughs> oh god, if we win. If we win. As long as he doesn't draw Tyrion. 12 cards in deck, 13 when you drew. If we, he doesn't draw, if we can play our true heart for just a couple turns and get some armor value off of it, we'll be alright. Alright. As long as, again, we cannot draw Tyrion. Tyrion is a no-go on the draw. Cannot draw Tyrion, guys. <laughs> Come on. We can hold through just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. We take we've taken out boom, we've taken out double mysterious challenger, we've dealt with the shredders, we've gone through Mount Everest, we've been climbing this tower this mountain for a long time, and we deserve to conquer it. You do not deserve to get that tier, even though I did misplay severely, our brawl did not do what it's supposed to do. So he decides he wants the blessings of the king, prematurely use that. He's probably just gonna go face with his weapon because he can't think of anything else to do because he's playing Secret Paladin. Good. This is good. Hell scream. Passive. Um, do we value a six three or a five four? I think we value the six three more just because it can pump in more damage. Next turn we can go ahead and death lord passive. The hell scream allows us to be able to enrage next turn if he decides to. Alright, so I guess the five four would have been better because it kills Belcher. Doesn't die, but I guess. Ooh, shield slam. That's good. Hell scream into that. He now goes rage mode. And we're able to win next turn. We play that. He can't kill it. We won, guys. Holy shit, I got so upset, but we pulled through the win with the double revenge. The double revenge. That's why we won. That is the only card in the deck that would have supplied us a win there. We were able to draw it. Revenge coming in clutch. He's probably really upset right now. Victory but you know what? You're playing Secret Power. Okay, we just need two more wins. He would be ranked. If he would have drawn if he would if he was if he was been wow. Well, if he was if he was able to draw Tyrion when I said he couldn't, he would have won. Because our armor up wouldn't have been enough and we wouldn't have been able to use I mean, if we did draw in a Death Lord, which would have taken up two charges. I don't know. It would have been a weird game, guys. Alright, so there's a Warlock. Probably if it's playing Zoo, if he's Zoo, we're, we stand a good chance. If he's not playing Zoo, it's a little bit difficult because of Lord Draxus, which you haven't really seen that matchup yet. But it's pretty difficult. So if he's playing Zoo, this is the probably the best opener we could ask for besides the War Axe instead of a Death Lord. So it'd be the 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so we're going to assume he's playing Zoo. That's what I'm basing this off of. And this off of is actually no information whatsoever. I'm just going to assume he's playing Zoo. Because we haven't played Zoo all day. We've been playing a lot of Reno, Warlock, and I'm probably... Oh, he's playing Zoo. Success. So do we coin the Death Lord to double Death Lord off the bat? I think we can. 
because we're not going to be punished by anything. Unless he plays like a power overwhelming here. And coining Death Lord may be a little premature to be honest. I don't know. We'll see. I guess we could have coined Despite next turn and deal with Yeah, coining Despite was probably a little bit better. Um, but not too bad. Double Death Lord, though. That's 16 health that you have to plow through. By the time you do, we're going to be able to deal with your field with Despites, Belchers, Executes. We've got the time. He probably will Iron Beak 1 eventually. He shoots over the passive. Alright, so at, the, at this point in time, I almost want to swing our Death Lord into one of these eggs just to kill off um, one of the 4-4s four that come out. Or we could go ahead and, you know what, we're going to do this because if he plays Void Terror, we're going to be in a bit of a, a bit of a situation. The Imp Gang boss is not something that changes game, but summoning, or some, Power Overwhelming and then playing a Void Terror is something that changes games. Even though we have Execute, I'd rather play around it, it preferably as soon as possible. So there's the Power Overwhelming, obviously, because he's targeting the egg. If he doesn't use it, then he just told me he had Power Overwhelming. Okay, so there's Power Overwhelming. Still not enough to kill one of these death lords, though. Unless he plosions? Implosion, definitely. There's the void terror, so we definitely played around that. That was really good, guys. Um, we can go ahead and attack the spider with our weapon and then execute off the 7 7, which is nice. But we probably. Um, I think we might bash this ahead of time. Bringing it to 1 HP. Making it generate a spider, and then we can attack this, it kills both of those, it makes a 1-1. One, one. We execute off the 7-7, seven, seven, and it generated another 1-1, one, one. this is fine, because we're going to be able to attack into it. Which one do we, should we attack into it with? Probably our... Probably this one, because it had the lower health. He's probably pretty upset right now, because that was his big wombo of the game. And now, next turn, we can go ahead and Belcher... The following turn, we can passive and hopefully draw into some other card that we can play. And then True Heart would just literally end the game. Void Caller still allows him to bring it back, though. So he gets Mount Ganis. That's going to be pretty hard to get rid of. Um, normally, I want to pop this as soon as possible. But right now, I don't. Because I don't know what demons he has. And we can't really deal with any demons right now. Because we don't even have enough armor with Shield Slam. So if he swings this into here, he actually can't kill anything. But if he swings into the 2-2 here, he might bring something out of his deck that we can BGH. But he can't attack with it right away, which is good. So Defender of Argus, really, really good for us. He does not get that battle cry from there. <laughs> Dr. Boom, we can BGH this. Okay. We can, we can do this. So, I think... We can go ahead and War Axe, attack this 2-3, kill off both these bombs. Oh man. Ooh, that was close. Go ahead and BGH that, and use our passive. Okay, so now if he kills the Death Lord, he can go ahead and summon another creature from his deck, pull out a demon from his hand, which I'm assuming he has probably a Doom Guard. He'll attack right away, he'll attack in the, the um, Belcher. But he'll play his demons first if he has any low demons, like a Void Caller. Sea Giant, okay, this is not the greatest thing that could have happened to us, but it does take up seven of his or six of his mana for an 8 8. So that's not that bad. But if he summons a Mount Ganus here, then we're pretty not that well. Spider, and there's a Mount Ganus. Alright, so Brawl is what we're looking for. Brawl, uh, execute. I have to take a piss. <laughs> Oh man. After this next turn, I'm gonna haul ass in the bathroom real quick. There's an execute, so that helps. Um, so if we passive. Okay. Passive, shield slam this. Swing three into this. Uh, wait, wait, wait. There's a right and wrong way to do this. We definitely have to passive first. We can shield slam this, kill it with our 4 2. Okay. Gotcha. Swing into that. Execute him. And then swing directly. 
set up death bite. I'm gonna end turn and I'm gonna be right back. My shield for Argus! Alright, my turn. Woo, buddy! Okay. So we can attack this into here, swing our death spite into the spiders, it creates two more little spiders, then we can play Baron, passive, and it kills every card ran in the 2 3. We're still at 21 health, he's at 11. Pretty good. Sorry about that, guys. I normally never have to do that, but we've been drinking a lot of water today, and it hit me hard. It was just like, yo. We still have Belcher as a backup plan. If we draw a health screen, we win. Explosion, Dark Bomb, 2-1 into it, keeps the brain alive. Hopefully he doesn't have too many possibilities with this and the battle cries. That doesn't help him too much. If he uses his passive, he definitely should have used passive prior to, yeah, his mistake. Mm -hmm. Hellscream would be the best card we could possibly draw right now, as long as he doesn't have a taunt. Get in there and fight! Abusive right. makes that have six attack. Okay. Brawl's pretty good. We could swing our weapon into there and brawl. Or should we just save weapon for Hellscream? Um. There we go. And just brawl. Oh, I guess attacking was kind of pointless, because, eh. I guess it's fine. Not too bad. Then we'll just play Belcher. I'm assuming the last card in his hand is a Doom Guard. Of course that lives. The best card he could have kept. So, Doom Guard into Belcher. And then he's 2 3 into our Slime. And because we used our weapon, if we draw on a Hell Scream, he's useless. So, I guess we should have just brawled and then Belcher. We didn't need to attack a spider. The spider was not Buying worth it. Death, or a death spite, for sure. It was not worth it. But if we, we can draw onto a death spite this turn, uh, we can actually deal 7 damage. But he's going to power overwhelming that. Ouch, that hurts. And now he's going to doom guard. Please don't doom guard. Alright, doom guard. Right. Well, footman, not that big of a deal. There's quite a few cards we can draw onto right now that are pretty good. Or how being a decent card. Go off and kill this. And then we'll actually swing directly because if we can attack with six directly with our core how we're pushing lethal. If we would have killed this imp right here, which was also a good target, this would have six and he would be at seven, and all he would have to do is not tap and us not draw into damage to kill him. So he's gonna tap here, he's looking for something, but there I don't think there's anything he can push for 15 damage uh if, with eight mana with three cards in hand. Uh double power overwhelming doom guard. That would probably be That'd be it. That'd be it. Get in there and fight. Abusive. That's not enough. And then there's the Doom card. He's been holding on to one card for a long time, guys. Ah, Gormok. Good tech. Not enough, though. Not enough. Not enough. That's a good game, though. That was a mistake on our end with that spider though. We could have just used Brawl and then saved the, uh, the spiders. And the spiders would have popped anyway, and then we could have tacked, and the spiders would have died. But either way, in that situation, it would have been fine. We just prematurely used it. Uh, but anyway, we need one more game or one more win. Let's make sure we're still recording because it would be sad if we weren't. We are, okay? Any more comments in YouTube that we can answer? Nope, no comments in YouTube. I uh, actually, this is like my third time doing this Road to Legend video, and we actually answered a lot of questions in the previous ones, but I don't really want to go back over them, because I went into yeah. great detail on a few of them, like, we were talking on, we were doing questions for like 10 minutes, and I just kind of went myself. 
All right, so Bash and Gore, I mean, um, Bash and War Axe is what we want to keep here. Gore Howl's too late and Executes too late. Uh, this guy is going to be playing Aggro Shaman, which is like literally the only Shaman we see. Uh, double War Axe is fantastic. As long as he doesn't play a one drop, we can save coin to coin out the Beltron for Bash on three, but it looks like we have to coin out the War Axe to take care of this Leper, which means, yeah, it's not, not too good. It's a good start on his end, but we still got War Axe on our end, which is still really, really good. Next turn, we can slam if we can't kill it with the War Axe, so if he plays like Totem Golem, we can get rid of it. Um, four damage off the start, though, with a Shaman's pretty devastating. So as long as he did, it's not like that one Shaman game. Uh, when we were playing our Fatigue Warrior uh, uh, deck guide, we should be alright. Taunt Totem, that's annoying. So I think we almost have to kill the Taunt Totem and re-weapon back up. We could have armored up, but then if we needed to kill a creature next turn, that we still have to get through the Taunt Totem. So, at least now we know he's not going to be able to... He'll play another totem. If it's like a healing or a 1-1, one, one, we probably won't deal with it. Uh, the spirit's not that big of a deal because we'll be able to bash one and kill the other. And then the following turn, we'll just keep going from there. The double shield block will allow us to gain that super amount of armor very, very quickly. And actually draw into the other cards that we may need. <clears throat> so, next turn, if he plays... Ideally, he plays a creature. We can slam it. Uh, passive. Kill it with our weapon. And then we can just belcher. Or we can just draw into, like, a decent 4-drop. Oh, there's a 3-drop that we'll I actually play here. And we'll, uh, we'll end our turn. We know he's not playing anything big, so I think this to tempo out BGH is fine. The, the Knife Juggler, hopefully not into Spirits. The Lightning Bolt on our 4-2. Okay, perfectly fine. Alright, that's fine. So we can actually slam one of these guys and death the lord. Seems pretty okay. 26 health, we're still alive. Uh, next turn we can double shield block if necessary, but probably Belcher will be the option. Or if we draw into a 4 drop, we can play that. Oh god, Lava Burst. This can quickly get out of hand. Crackle, oh god. So he summoned another creature in attacking phase with the Knife Juggler. Horse Rider's really good because now he has a charge. Did he end turn before it came out? He did not. Alright, so we're gonna Belcher. Oh man, guys. We need to get rid of this totem. So if we draw on another weapon, it was a mistake. So we gotta get rid of it. We also don't want him using Abusive Sergeant on that totem. Hopefully he doesn't have the Earth Shock when he needs it. We need to draw into Shield Maiden's good. Um, there's quite a few decent cards in this situation. We need to kill off this Knife Juggler. There's the Rock Biter on himself. Okay, and then he's going to swing his 2-1 into there, and then his 3-2 into our 1-2 slime, which means if we draw into the Revenge, we can kill everything on his side of the field. So revenge is our best draw. No revenge. We're gonna shield block into hopefully revenge. Nope. So we're going to shield block again. To despite, and we can kill off his three block. So next turn, probably despite passive, but we want a true heart as soon as possible. Right now the field isn't looking good, and he's just gonna get more and more out of hand from here. And this trog needs to die. Do not roll a taunt totem. Yes. So the trog is gonna go down. ASAP. And then we'll kill the totem goal on the following turn. We need another death lord, which would be good. Shield main's good, but it doesn't actually deal with this right now. This card needs to die as AP, and then next turn we'll be able to kill the Totem Golem, and then go ahead and Shield Maiden passive for 7 more armor. And then on turn 10, we'll be able to true passive True Heart passive, which is 6 more armor. And as long as he doesn't draw into Doom Hammer, he already used one Rock Biter, and this isn't a Taunt Totem, which is not, which is really good. That saved our ass there. We're, we're pretty much able to kill everything on his side of the field and gain 7 more armor next turn. He's gonna go face with the Lava Shock to unload more mana crystals, okay, for the 3. Brawl is actually pretty good here, but it doesn't allow us to get as much armor as we want. Shield main gets us more. So we take two, but then we go back up to 17. Next turn we're getting six more armor, 
as long as he doesn't draw into again like a doom hammer i guess doom hammer would still be okay but it's again not a card we want him to get and then um ancestral knowledge to be able to kind of refill his hand with another two cards Mergleton, hopefully not hunter passive that card is pretty bad as well uh, warlock passive is pretty bad druid passive it's still good for him, but it's better than him getting Warlock or Honest. It looks like this game is shaping out to be a win for us, though. For sure. We're going to kill this. Right now, it's it's kind of heading in our direction, but we can still lose, surprisingly. I've seen uh, Shamans come back from worse. Um, do we kill Mergleton or do we just go phase for five and start going? Okay, I think it's something done. So, rank four. Hello, how are you doing? Getting closer and closer to that all right guys i will see you in our next episode let me know in the comment section below kind of what decks you want to see me play um it's kind of going to get skinny in the decks we play though because i don't want to use decks i'm not really proficient at when i'm at this high of a rank just because it's not time efficient um as like ranks you know 18 through like five i can play whatever but when we get to you know rank one through five i kind of want to stick with the decks that i feel comfortable with so like reno lock is an option um fatigue warrior is an option uh, control warrior is good uh, what's another deck that I'm, uh, I like a lot? Midrange Druid's okay, but I don't, you know, it's a pretty boring deck in my opinion to watch. Um, but yeah, just let me know what you guys would like to see. Of course, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, the comment section below is always there for you guys, like I mentioned before. Sorry, kind of said that twice. Anyway, guys, I'm Warshack as always, and happy whatever the hell day it is. <laughs>